Tempomandibular function and orthotropics. I advise you to watch the previous video that we did where I'm explaining my thoughts on what's causing this problem. Um, it was worthwhile understanding that before we consider cures. But this is about trying to cure temporomandibular dysfunctions, problems with the temporomandibular joint permanently. Um, we don't have temporomandibular dysfunction in any of the other 5,400 species of mammals. I mean, it is a vast different group, apart from occasionally. I mean, you will get occasional abnormalities and traumas, but almost none of these get problems with their jaw joints. Um, and yet, a significant percentage of people get debilitating problems, whom I, I feel for greatly because almost nothing seems to provide a long-term answer for many of these people. As I described in the last video, most um, therapies give about a 50% five-year success rate, um, which for 50% of the people is not good enough. And how can we try to treat, no, cure these people, because that's what we really need to do. Now I describe the difference between um, the people who, um, in these situations, who at rest seem to have a space between their teeth and their jaw joint is completely centered. But when biting together, the jaw joint goes up and back. And I'm suggesting that the cause of this is actually because they rest with their teeth open, because this is helping them clear their airway <coughs> and placing, and from, due to that, they're placing a section of their tongue between their teeth and they're hanging their mouths open, a combination of both of these things. And such, as such, their jaw joint is centered in this position. Most of the, the jaw joint is in that position most of the time, so it reforms to being in that position in the same way that if someone wants to put me in a room with a low ceiling most of the time, my vertebra would grow to this shape. And it's the same way our bodies are adaptable and they adapt to the environment we live in and the posture that we place upon them. If I stand up nice and straight, I tend to have a straight posture. If I don't stand up straight, I don't have a straight posture. And my joints reform due to that. Now, if we're going to cure this problem, we need to cure the underlying problem that's causing it. And the underlying problem, as we're seeing, is the fact that there isn't enough space for the tongue. And without enough space for the tongue, it's going between the teeth, and that's causing to this open posture. Now, in orthotropics, what we're aiming to do is a combination of two things. First is increasing the tongue space, and then using appliances to train people to keep their mouth in tooth together position. If you combine both of these and the individual moves their tongue up out of the airway, out from between their teeth and into this space that we've provided, then they will be cured. Now, Sometimes people with big problems want big answers. They want to have lots of things done to them. They almost come to what we call a victim status, where they want someone to help them because of the situation they're in. And often simple little solutions like raising your tongue into the roof of your mouth and keeping your teeth together and your lips closed sound a little pathetic, a little too small, considering what a large problem they have. And many people inform me that they do have their tongue on the roof of the mouth. Although while I'm talking to them, I watch their tongue 
being in a low position, at least during speaking. And I frequently see nearly all of them resting like this. So, it, it's a very difficult thing to do, changing posture, and I don't under-estimate under, under uh, the difficulty in doing such. Um, it's particularly difficult to do unless you're also provided with more space for the tongue to go in by widening the top jaw, both sideways and sagittally, as we refer to it. But having done that, you also need training in keeping the mandible closed and up. Now, we already have devices in orthotropics doing this that are proving very successful on patients with temporomandibular dysfunction. In effect, when you drop your mouth open, these appliances touch your skin inside your mouth, training you to keep your mouth closed. If the mouth is closed for a couple of conscious hours, and then all the time you're sleeping, which is all your unconscious time, which is a fantastic time we have found to train people, then for a good chunk of every day, <clears throat> your teeth are in this position. And over time, the jaw joint will reform to be centered with the teeth in this position. So rather than moving the teeth to fit this position, as most practitioners advocate after splint therapy, and rather than moving the jaw joint into the right position, that is one of the surgical approaches, or treating the other symptoms as most of the other therapies do, we're trying to move the jaw joint by informing the body that this is now the postural position, not this, so the joint should be reformed in this position. In the same analogy, if I had been in this position and my vertebra were now wedge-shaped, if I was to stand up straight all of the time, my vertebra would now become columnar again. However, it's an incredibly difficult thing to remember to do. If my vertebra were that shaped, this would now be my comfortable position. And as humans, we are creatures of comfort. You could remind me a hundred times a day to stand up straight, and yet I would inevitably return to my previous postural comfortable position. The way we change this in orthotropics is by having an appliance that reminds you to do it. It's a little bit like me lending you a belt that has a big spike that comes up to here. Now, I would probably never touch that spike. Its presence in my subconscious would remind me to change. And it is only through changing you, the patient, that we can cure this underlying problem. And I don't claim it's easy to change. I don't claim that everyone will change, but I do claim that everyone has the capacity to change. And through treatments like this, I think we're seeing the future of a cure of temporal mandibular dysfunction.